Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing what might be the best value in the Zenith catalog launched in 2022. This is the Zenith DeFi Skyline. It's how Zenith does an integrated bracelet steel sports watch. It's 41 millimeters in diameter. It's 11.8 millimeters thick. Uh, from lug tip to lug tip, just the case is 46.5 millimeters. If we include the end link on each side, then the link to link total distance across the wrist is 49.5 millimeters. And the watch includes a little push button quick release so you can swap between this bracelet and the included accessory strap that comes with the watch. It comes with an included accessory strap that comes with its own separate deployant clasp so you can use it with this watch and it's really seamless to swap between the two. It's just like a car seat belt buckle. You pop it out, you snap it back in. Now on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, the watch wears nicely. It is somewhat broad, but if you find that it's too broad or your borderline, just put it on the strap. It is quite thin. As you can see, it'll easily fit underneath a cuff, especially a cuff with any looseness like a jacket, no problem there. I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 15 centimeters in circumference. Again, my wrist is a 16. If you put it on the strap, you could probably get away with a 14 centimeter circumference wrist. Taking a look at the bracelet, it's nicely done. It's a combination of satin and polish. I appreciate the polished bevel on the exterior, but what I really like is the polished interior faces of the intermediate links. The removable links here, as you can see, are fixed in place by screws, which is the way a bracelet should be built. I don't like pin sleeves on expensive watches, even though that's how Patek does its bracelets now. Zenith is doing things the right way. The buckle is a double fold. Externally, we have the Zenith star and the company name, and we have twin trigger release, so it stays shut until you press both of the triggers at the same time. Internally, the clasp has satination as well as engine turning for decoration. It is fully integrated, and while Zenith did not create the integrated bracelet sports watch category, it has done a good job entering the space, as this watch is considerably more expensive than all of the Royal Oak and Nautilus wannabes on the market. It is what Zenith has always been, a manufacturer with integrity in the way the watches are engineered and the way they are priced, and this is priced quite fairly. We have a screw-down crown with the Zenith star outboard. We have a lovely knurling with a combination of satin and polish. The screw-down crown endows the watch with 100-meter water resistance. The bezel is a dodecagon, or a 12-sided object. You can see it incorporates a rather complex faceting. You have the outer facets, you have a rounded intermediate plane, and then you have this vertical satination across the flat top. The dial is a blue sunburst metallic, and then it has these little star-shaped indentations. They definitely have depth and they add a different texture and a contrasting tone on the dial. The date disc is the same color as the dial, which everyone should do. For some reason, every brand doesn't. We have hands and indices that are rhodium-plated steel along with the logo. Applique indices give the watch an upscale look. And we have a rather fatuous but fabulous 10-second lightning second or foudroyant hand over at 9 o'clock. The watch has plenty of luminescence and yes, they loomed that foudroyant hand wonderful. The watch is powered by what they describe as an El Primero caliber, 3620. So although it is not a chronograph, it is part of the El Primero automatic high beat family. It does have hacking seconds, something that El Primeros traditionally have not had. So that's a wonderful resource to have and a refinement that is relatively new to the El Primero family. You can also see that we have a quick set mechanism that allows us to engage the intermediate setting position and rapidly swap between the different positions. The watch has a movement that is appreciated through the reverse of the case. And we have this relatively new addition to the El Primero family, the 3620. Again, hacking and a quick set, a tandem not traditionally found on El Primero's, also not traditionally found on El Primero's. The silicon escapement, you can see it quite well here. It's unlubricated and makes for high efficiency and better performance in between services because it does not need to be lubricated so the lubricants do not degrade over time. Also, this watch 
has automatic winding and a 60-hour power reserve, which is more than a traditional El Primero. Traditionally, they're about 50. We have an all grayscale nickel anthracite techno-industrial finish that makes this watch look very modern and urban. It's got a 26-joule pivot arrangement. It beats away at 10 beats per second or 36,000 vibrations per hour. It uses Etichron for ultra-fine adjustment. And then you can see it also has the El Primero's traditional eccentric screw regulation system. And in that regard, it has both polished screws for physical assembly and blued screws, which are used for adjustments. It's a good looking movement in a good looking watch and a very versatile one as well. On the strap, I can even see a lady wearing and enjoying this timepiece. It's the face of Zenith watchmaking in the 21st century. That is why the skyline is not only part of Zenith's past and this wonderfully geometrically faceted 1970s style case, but also very much pointing toward its future. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.